Well, with America blaming the Syrian regime for chemical attacks, the U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice expressed concern that Israel could also be at risk. The use of chemical weapons also directly threatens our closest ally in the region, Israel, where people once again have readied gas masks. She's warned chemicals could easily fall into the hands of terrorists. RT has received information from a number of sources that rebels active in Syria are planning to launch a chemical attack on Israel. It would be used as a provocation against the Syrian government and our correspondent Paula Sleer has more from Tel Aviv. I've spoken to both the Israeli foreign ministry as well as the army spokesperson's unit and I was asking them for their reaction to the reports we have that and there is an imminent threat being planned by Syrian rebels originating in territory in Syria that is controlled by the Syrian government against Israel. Now the reaction was to quote one of the spokespeople far-fetched. The, the other response was simply a refusal to comment. As of yet, no reaction in the Israeli press. It's difficult to say whether or not we expect such a reaction because very often this country is reluctant to comment publicly certainly the officials don't want to go on record giving any kind of statements of what is happening inside Syria but the information we are getting and this is from sources that are close to what is happening on the ground in Syria is that as I say this attack will originate in a sad coal controlled territory but it will be carried out by the rebels the result of this is that the blame will be firmly put on the shoulders of the Assad regime now at the same time, the important point to make is that there has been a report that has just been released by the leading Israeli counter-terrorist think tank. And this report does talk about the possibility of unconventional weapons falling into the hands of terrorist groups inside Syria. Israelis are concerned that chemical stockpiles will fall into, quote, the wrong hands. And for Israelis, this really is the hands of Hezbollah. And although Israeli officials have not in the past gone on record admitting this, it's widely understood understood that Israel has carried out at least four strikes inside Syria at weapon delivery supplies uh, to, to the Hezbollah militants and to the Hezbollah organization. Of course, Israel would rather prefer a sad stay in power. There's no love loss between the two countries, but it's almost like that old saying, better the devil you know than the devil you don't know from the Israeli side. I want to also bring your attention to the information we're receiving from a Belgian researcher who was recently released from having been held captive by Syrian rebels inside that country and he was held by them for five months and he has said that he denies that the Syrian president was responsible for this notorious gas attack that took place on a village near Damascus in which more than a thousand civilians were allegedly gassed to death. Domenico and I have a moral duty to say that it's not the Bashar al-Assad government that used sarin or any other gas in the Damascus suburb of Ghouta. We're certain of that after a conversation we overheard, even though it cost me to say so, because I've supported the Free Syrian Army passionately in its fair fight for democracy. Now, this Belgian national says he has this information because he overheard a conversation between his captors in which they said as much, and that is that they were responsible for this attack. But of course, we'll stay on top of the situation, waiting to see if there's any kind of Israeli official reaction to these reports of a potential rebel strike against this country. Israel's government strongly supports the possibility of a U.S.-led military strike against Damascus. However, Amir Oren, he's a senior correspondent and columnist for Israel's Haaretz newspaper, believes it would be in his nation's interest to keep President Assad in place. If one had to choose, uh, it um, uh, seems that Israel would prefer the Assad regime, uh, even though uh, a weakened one, perhaps uh, without uh, such uh, ties with Iran and Hezbollah, uh, to stay in place, because uh, the Assad regime has a governmental uh, raison d'etre. It wants to remain in power, and it has to take care of a state. The other groups uh, don't have to... Uh, 
to be concerned uh, with such matters. And uh, this is the same uh, system that we saw in uh, Lebanon, where Hezbollah became a bit more um, establishmentarian, and in Gaza, where Hamas, once uh, it took over, started to behave like a government and became uh, more restrained. So for Israel, um, if one had uh, to put it uh, on the scales, uh, it would prefer uh, not uh, very happily, but it would prefer the Assad regime.